For the latest top tips, reviews and advice, please subscribe below. Hello and welcome to At Walls Outdoors with me, Mike. Showing you guys a bit of a video review on a new plash product for the 22 season from Outwell. So with me here today, I've got the Outwell Wood Lake. So the Wood Lake is actually, to be fair, a model that's been in the range uh, for, since 2020, uh, moves in 21, and then into 22, we see some new features built into it, but also a new size. So not only have we had the 7 uh, ATC we've seen for a number of years now, we've also got introduction to a slightly smaller size, which is the 6 ATC. And with me today, I've got the 6 to kind of show you. If you want to know a bit more of an idea about the, certainly the 7 size, check out our video review on 21, and the size of it and everything is not changed at all, but the spec is obviously as we're talking about in this little video. So what we've got here is kind of Outwell's top-end kind of inflatable polycotton tent. It's all about brilliant quality, lots of features, um, but also, in, to be fair, making it you know, fairly decent in terms of price point. It's air, so it's quick and easy to pitch. You can see from our own at walls pitching and packing video, it took me no longer than about sort of 12, 13 minutes to pitch on my own, which means you can take it away for those smaller trips as well as those longer ones as well. We've got this kind of uh, TC or you know, poly cotton or technical cotton fabric here. Um, so it's really nice and breathable. So the joys of this actually on a warm day, it'd be a lot cooler on the inside. And on a cold day, it'd be a bit warmer uh, inside. So it has the best bit of both worlds really. The fabric can sort of expand and contract, allow air to pass through it. So that breathability is a big, big point, not only because it gives you a longer lifespan, but more importantly, because you get less condensation inside of it and that kind of more comfortable. One of the other benefits of poly cotton as well is it's more of natural fabric. It sits nicer. You get kind of less sort of synthetic kind of flapping noise in the wind. It's a more, more natural fabric. It's nicer. The drawbacks to it is A, of course, it's more expensive because it's a better material. Yes, it has a longer lifespan. It's a little bit heavier as well, or quite a bit heavier as well. So you want to check the pack weight and also the pack size because, you know, that's got to come from somewhere. Uh, and you want to be kind of, it's very important, of course, you pack it away bone dry as it is with any tent. It's just a window to leave it sort of wet or damp in a bag is a lot smaller just because it's small, so just mold and mildew. But you take care of it and it will take care of you to a certain extent. So we've got essentially a free zone tent. We've got sleeping, living, and then we've got a really nice big enclosed canopy section. In terms of the differences in kind of the widths, the seven runs around about sort of um, about 470 wide, whereas with the six here, we're looking about 390 wide. It's about 80 centimeters difference between the six and then the seven. Length, they're not too dissimilar at all. We're only gaining about, about 35 centimeters, and that's five centimeters in the living and 30 centimeters in the actual canopy section. So actually I do quite like this six model just because I think it fits that little gap of being big enough without being too big. And for me, I'd say the seven is more probably an ideal for looking for, you know, your five sort of family of five or family of four will like lots of room. Whereas I see the six being definitely more of a, a true family of four, uh, or if you really want to go to a kind of a couple's tent. Both the models can be extended. There's an additional kind of front awning, universal awning you can buy that goes on here and brings it forward. And we've got a separate video on that, which you can always check and look at. We've got beautiful big PVC windows. And there's actually an element of tint to them as well. So you, it kind of gives you a bit more privacy when you're on the inside looking out. From the outside looking in, you can sort of see uh, sort of shapes, not so much detail as such, but it's a nice way of sort of, you know, getting a little bit of privacy without having to use the zip up curtains to get that full closure. We've got kind of like this kind of floating guy line kind of system where we've got two tone guy lines, uh, which really quite well. And also you've got um, each individual beams inflated individually as seen from our packing video. So it's very easy to pitch. A really big kind of oversized dinghy valve uh, helps to get the air in and out effortlessly. From the uh, front point, we've got these really nice storm straps bringing in and getting extra torsion into the roof. There's also an additional brace of beam that's actually supplied with it for on the above bedroom section just to kind of give it more structural strength and again get that fabric looking really tall that's one thing i do love about kind of poly cotton in terms of the nature it it sits really well and you don't have to be the expert to get it looking really taut beneath the windows we see on the side here we've also got low level ventilation not only will we get breathability from the fabric itself but our airflow is going to help you know give a bit more fresh air inside 
and again just reduce down condensation to a certain extent. Other things is the small details I do quite like, even things like your little kind of um, guy line sort of we call it ret retainers. So when you're not using them, you can tack pack them away nice and neatly. So you actually kind of benefit from the fact that you're not having it kind of sloshed all over the place and then tangling with one another. We've got two doors on either side, uh, which are full with mesh. So you can also get airflow directly through. That twin up with kind of the uh, front mesh door in the sort of living section, you've got a kind of a bug free barrier in that whole living point. And we'll come to that a bit later on in the video. Other things to mention is we've got a nice big rear vent as well um, to get a bit more airflow, certainly for that sleeping kind of part. And all of the kind of bottom pegging points of your sample are kind of webbing straps, so you can get a bit of extra torsion when you need to. From the front door, the front door can open up from the right towards the left or left towards the right, so it's nice and flexible in that sense. You can design whether you want to have your kind of runway or walkway in here. Personally, I think it works better when we go from right to left just because it sort of goes back and then we create a coral down the right hand side and create dead spots in between and it sort of simulates what the middle door does. The front door also has kind of uh, four uh, pullers so you can actually open up and create this kind of little veranda kind of effect. So you have a bit of airflow directly into the front of the awning itself um, but still keep dogs and sort of kids neatly inside or for example furniture and things like that. So what I'm going to do now if we uh, unravel it from right to left. The joys of obviously having the ability to zip it from one side to the other is that you can also be a bit lazy and try and create a bit more of an open canopy. You can probably see actually we've got curtains built into the front of the awning as well so we want to get the ultimate amount of proofs you can do and the thing that I do like this in comparison to say the other ranges that they do that not in the polycot material is you've got zip curtains on the front panels as well as all the sides so you can go up almost halfway or fully open by opening up the side like so you can see you can almost create a little area like that Thing that will be bring that zip all the way down to the bottom just fold the panel in half and what I'm going to do rather than say roll it across I'm literally going to lay it on the floor unpeg it and then fold it directly in. So what we essentially lose is having a big load of fabric rolled up in this corner so then it feels more like kind of an open canopy. You've got kind of this uh, kind of rigid air system with a bit more of a gothic arch to kind of help to increase the internal height. But I'll tell you what, let's kind of bring the camera around a little bit and then have a look inside of the wood lake and talk more features that it has to offer. So now we're kind of swinging the camera around and we're sort of facing straight down the barrel of the gun of kind of the wood lake you can kind of see kind of the overall sort of size in this front section as well we've got actually quite a nice generous kind of uh, canopy section which is quite nice and again kind of for the sort of the, the sort of width we've got here i think it's ample enough for what the section is you need to be uh, it's about 220 for memory depth versus 250 um, in the actual kind of seven version beautiful because they've got obviously windows either side and the thing I say is the zip up curtains throughout it, not only on the side panels, also but on the front. So you can get that ultimate amount of coverage as you need to and bring it down halfway as you wanted to. It's almost worth mentioning that actually as well, you've got low level ventilation beneath each side to help with that sort of airflow in here. And as we kind of uh, sort of work our way back to the kind of the main door, we've got little storage pockets built into here as well to help kind of declutter this whole kind of front section. If you want a ground sheet for the section, I recommend buying a footprint as it will kind of cover this area and it actually kind of uh, helps to kind of toggle uh, in place a little bit as well. So that's also a good recommendation if you wanted to kind of have it kind of a bit more of a, a sort of solid base. For me, if you have a door open partially, I think grass is a better scenario, or at least kind of fold a ground sheet in half for the section, just so means you've got a little bit for the uh, rain to sort of go down in and soak into the ground rather than collect on the ground sheet. One of the big features uh, for 22 in terms of improvements in the, in the wood lake is the fact that we've got the quick and quiet door now built onto this middle section. What this essentially allows you to do is kind of go in and out of kind of a living section without having to worry about opening any zips. And the joys behind it is essentially it's designed to kind of close up behind you as well, just so it means you can kind of happily go in and out, or even for example, the dog to go in and out as and when you really want to. This uh, door can be used either in this quick and quiet fashion. And actually it's worth mentioning that actually that you've got zip pullers located down here. So you can have this whole front panel 
completely open as your main bug kind of barrier. Failing that, if you want to use it more for privacy, the material itself is more like a kind of, it is kind of a cottony kind of fabric. So actually you will get a level of breathability even when you've got the curtains kind of fully zipped up. Again, the joys of the zips is you can go kind of almost halfway with it. So you've got a bit of air, but all still will remain a bit of coverage. If you don't, like I said, like the idea of um, essentially the kind of quick and quiet door, you can zip that up. There's also a zip puller as well to give a little bit more of a veranda kind of feel like we saw on the outside. For me, I don't see much, honestly, much point in that to be fair, because you've got the mesh part to it anyway. So what I do now, I zip that up to treat it like a... I'm coming out, are you? Go on in. So keep it all nice and neat, you can use it like a normal door, so it opens from right to left. Again, you can kind of bring it half back, so you've got a door that goes out from the to upwards, and then you've got a zip that runs along the bottom, again, to get a bit more of a thoroughness to it. So you can bring it back halfway. There it is. So you can bring it back like so if you really want to. Fay and that, open it fully open, and then we can bring kind of the living area and kind of the front canopy area all into one position. And then you've got some ties to kind of bring like so, but for the time being, I'm gonna be a bit lazy and just kind of shove it in the corner. So now we've kind of done that, this lip can drop down. You then have a trip free kind of access in and out of the actual tent itself. And again, some of the little details I do like about it that the bottom zip located here has also got a bit of extra PVC. Just as where it's, when it's let down, the zip's not necessarily going into the mud. And again, it's going to help kind of the longevity and sort of the maintenance of the actual product itself. The interior height wise, it's a sort of certainly decent, especially in the middle. That kind of Gothic art system does help to give you a bit more kind of uh, internal side of things. When you get to the corners, it is a little bit kind of lower. For, it's not probably as boxy as something like, say, like the, uh, the Van Gogh Ventanis. That's very kind of boxy in the Saints. And to be fair, if you're looking at like for like kind of like a six man tent, you know, this is a six man, uh, classifies it as a 390 width, whereas the Ventanis TC is 440 for six man. So it depends on the per person ratio you're looking to go into. Space in terms of the actual kind of living area side, it's pretty plentiful. There's lots of room in here to be fair. Like I said, the depth is only about five centimeters difference um, it, between the seven and the six. We've got low level ventilation points beneath the, both the PVC windows on either side. And we've got two mesh panels uh, where the, essentially the door are. So we've got the ultimate about a breathability from the side and obviously from the front and beneath the windows. Cable entry points, so when you want your mains hook up, you can either bring it in through a middle point on either side. And then you've also got the ability to hang uh, lanterns and things like that on nearly every single beam all the way through uh, the part. So you've got these little kind of sky hook systems, which just kind of clip on nice and neatly. And you have a hanging point from there. You can have multiple. You can get 10 as standard with the actual tent, but you can buy additional ones if you want to. Into the bedroom scenario now, in the uh, sort of the six, we've got uh, a 50 50 split, so straight down the middle, 180 180. Whereas when you go to the seven, uh, essentially it's three bedrooms. You've got a master bedroom in the middle, which is 180, and I'm pretty sure it's 120 and 140 uh, sort of either side. So you can kind of pick and choose where you need to go. Both master bedrooms, whether it be the seven or the six, have the quick and quiet door feature. For me, it's kind of the origination of how they put it onto. Uh, it works a lot better in terms of closing itself up. In the middle, it can be a little bit temperamental if I'm perfectly honest with you. But you can kind of go in and out as you please. I think, to be fair, it kind of works better in this sense because it's the one door where you want it to be quiet when you kind of leave afterwards. You know, it's one of the doors where if you're coming, adults are most likely coming late, you know, into bed uh, in comparison to the kids. So putting seems like is probably the last thing you want to necessarily do. If you don't want to necessarily use the quick and quiet door, like with the middle door there, you can, can just zip that down completely. And then still utilize it like a normal door. You've got a big mesh panel built into the front of the doors in the bedroom section as well, allows airflow in. And because you've got a slightly darker material to hopefully reduce early morning, early morning light, um, it's also can be used as a, a way to kind of allow a little bit more light into the bedroom section itself. We've got a slightly deeper bedroom section as well, so it's about 230. Admittedly, again, it's not the deepest on the market, but it's a bit nicer having a bit more better depth. Just allows for those for those kind of camp beds or kind of high-rise air beds 
to have a little bit more play towards the end. And the tent has a little bit more of a boxier design at the back here, so it's sort of a bit flatter at the back, again, to allow for those higher beds. Zip dividers between the sections as well is down the sides. A little bit disappointing at this level uh, in terms of the spec, you know, the price point of what it is, it's not on the bottom. Um, but you can obviously open it up and have it one big bedroom if you really wanted to. Also located here, you've got a big vent that's sort of, um, is kind of symmetry to kind of the one at the back, which you can obviously put down or put up. So you've got airflow, but also allows you visibility out into the back and you can just toggle that down when you don't want to. A hanging point for a lantern in the bedrooms as well is quite a nice point as well, as well as storage pockets built down the side. And also then you've got it built into the front of the inner. You've got a cable entry point into the inner bedroom as well, which again is a quite a nice little feature and it's on both sides as well. So it doesn't matter if you do decide to have this is the master bedroom and that not. Brace beam as well helps to give a bit more um, sort of torsion in the roof section at the back. Um, but let's bring the camera in and probably get a little bit more of a feel for the, uh, the wood lake as it is. So like I said, we've got beautiful kind of windows as you can see, so you get great sort of visibility in. A little kind of, uh, well, it's like, almost like a position, a bit of fabric runs between to stop you splaying the beams out too much. And you can see as you go back, you've got that kind of open kind of front when that door is tucked away in the corner. From here, you can see obviously the kind of, all the window panels, so you can get great views around the campsite itself. The low level ventilation beneath that window for the airflow and the red zip of kind of the cable entry point. And that's the same on both sides as previously mentioned. Your kind of hook track system is located here. So again, it means you can actually hang lanterns and stuff. Then you can kind of pick and choose where you want to put it via just removing it completely or clipping it on quite simply. It allows you to kind of almost have, um, and because it's on nearly every single beam in the middle of the zip, for some reason you can't put a bit of cord across from one bit to the other. And merely on this particular tent, it's not actually on the uh, bedroom one. Um, but I suppose the main light's going to be in the middle of the room anyway, so that's probably not necessarily a bad thing, and it's by the cable entry point itself. As we kind of come into the bedroom section, we've got, obviously, you can see the vent, which we've currently got up, and it sort of allows a little bit of light through. We've got the storage pockets located down low, and then we've got the zip dividers either side, with the hanging points just located dead centre, as we previously said. And then the little pockets at the front, with the little cable entry point low at the bottom, and then we've got this mesh really quite nice fine mesh um, on either side. As we kind of come out the tent, I think actually I do, I do, in many ways I almost prefer the size of the six and I do the seven, just from, I think a size point of view, it's a little bit of a gap in the market, I think actually to be fair in comparison. I think for one thing that from looks wise, it sits really well. The, the blue color is, I think they've nailed that in terms of being a really nice premium part. You can see obviously the, the rain safe um, ventilation points down the bottom and we've got that mesh door on the side. Each beam you can see has got its own inflation point right at the bottom again. And as you swing around to the back, not only have you got kind of the webbing straps located, bringing it really nice and torsion for the roof, but you've got that kind of uh, vent right at the back here which you can open and close. If you want to, you can always bring it out a little bit and have it positioned so you have airflow but still have a short shelter from the rain. And you can just have a little look inside the tent from there. <laughs> and yeah, and go from there as well. Just see Archie there. As we kind of continue around, same as much on the other side. Sits really well. Colour scheme also works well. But I think, yeah, like I said, it was going to say earlier, I think the for me, I think I prefer the six in terms of the size. I think proportionally it works really well. It also means it's a little bit more of a usual pack size and pack weight than the seven. Seven and Bitly is probably a little bit larger in terms of overall size, but from a price point of view, I think it's very close, really, to something like the uh, Kalahari 9. Uh, and then I think from value for money, again, the, that Ventanis is quite considerably less in terms of money, but a little bit more in terms of space and functionality. So it, it all comes down to really kind of what you're looking to get out of the tent, what's important to you, whether you want things like the, the quick and quiet bedrooms, the external storage pockets as well as internal, the you know, mesh door here and the side doors. So yeah, it's kind of got its own little place. Um, one thing to mention as well is it doesn't actually, surprisingly it doesn't come with like a roller bag, so that would be an optional extra, it comes with like a normal carry bag, which for the weight of it is, you would expect it a little bit probably to have a little bit more of a premium bag, um, especially when you're paying you know, quite well over sort of two grand really for 
either of the six or the seven but as a concept it's nice I like it's got a decent level of features set it's a good sort of size it's out our quality which we kind of know and love um, and all and things like kind of the hook track system again gives it a little bit of point of difference in comparison to some brands on the market so all in all I think it's not a bad product depending on where you're going for the six or the uh, seven you can always check the link below this video It'll take you straight through to our website where we've got all the information from pack sizes pack weights floor dimensions uh, prices bundle deals uh, all the in basic features itemized for you as well so you can compare and contrast with other products that are in the marketplace but yeah by means, let us know what you think of the tent as well whether you like the updates of kind of that quick and quiet door to the middle section or not um, it's always great to have feedback which we can always hopefully pass on to Atwell uh, if they choose to listen so um, but yeah that's kind of a little video review on the updated Wood Lake 780C and also the new 680C